Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Vandalia By The Way. My name is Rich Hopkins. I'm the communications manager for the city. And on today's program, we've got some interesting information on a new high-tech way to train you to properly use a fire extinguisher. We're also gonna check in with our Parks and Recreation Department, find out why senior citizens might be getting a great deal at our recreation center. But our first stop today is here right along Helky Road in Vandalia. You know, it is springtime. I dressed for spring. Unfortunately, the weather didn't cooperate. And with the April showers, we hope for the May flowers to pop up. But this time of year in Vandalia, it's these advertising signs that are popping up all over the place. And that could be a problem. A problem because depending on where those signs are placed, they may have to come down. Property Code Inspector Kip Milliken says that as we get to the spring season, dozens of illegal signs pop up each and every week. We call this the tree lawn area, and we see a lot of signs, as you see here, being placed in the tree lawn areas, especially this time of year, garage sales. People are cleaning out the garage, uh, garages and getting ready for those sales. And this is, uh, this is prohibited in the city. These signs right here are prohibited. You cannot place those there. You can place them on private property behind the sidewalk here. Another popular but illegal location for signs is on utility poles. The telephone poles, you, uh, those are prohibited too as well. Do not place anything on telephone poles, uh, anything in the road right away. Utility poles, it's not only uh, a city ordinance uh, that prohibits that, it's also a state ordinance as well. So what happens when the signs are placed in the wrong spot? Well, unfortunately, those signs have to come down, with Milligan pulling the signs and putting them in the back of his truck. You can come to our city government building, the engineering site, or just give us a call. Simple, just, simply just give us a call, and we'll check to see if uh, any of our staff uh, may have pulled it uh, myself, and we'll give that back to you. If you discover that signs you placed are missing, you can always check with the Department of Development and Engineering Services. That number is 415-2307. From pulling down signs to putting out fires, our next stop today is at Vandalia's Division of Fire, where firefighters are turning to a high-tech piece of equipment to teach folks how to properly use a fire extinguisher. Um, recently, uh, the city, the uh, Fire Prevention Bureau, has purchased um, a uh, highly electronic uh, fire extinguisher demo unit. Um, it's made by Bullocks. Um, it can be used inside, outside. Um, it's all run off LED lights and a laser extinguisher. Fire inspector Brian Ziegenbusch says the new system allows his department to train people on the proper fire extinguisher use without all the mess. The Division of Fire recommends everyone in your household take advantage of the opportunity to learn how to properly use a fire extinguisher. Vandalia's economic development officials, meanwhile, are hopeful that an as-yet unnamed company takes advantage of all that Vandalia has to offer. Assistant City Manager Greg Shackelford says he's been working closely with a broker on a deal that could bring a new company and new jobs to the city. Um, we're calling the project right now Lakota, uh, but uh, it could be a, a project that they're looking at over 200,000 square feet for, for, of property. Uh, it, they're looking at the site uh, in Stone Quarry Crossings, uh, just uh, next door to Carter Logistics on the north side of Capstone, which would be across the street from, from White Castle. Um, they're, uh, they're looking at about 20 acres over there, and uh, it's, it, it's, it would be another logistics and di distribution type of, uh, of, of company. And uh, for us, what that would mean, it would uh, be really exciting. It would be um, probably in the next three years, potentially 75 to 100 employees. Uh, it's not a truck terminal. From what I understand, it's a, a really, it would be a really nice design building. Um, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. We got some, some hurdles to overcome, but from what I understand, uh, it's one of the top sites that they've been looking at uh, in the region. Project Lakota isn't the only good news on the development front, as local company Manufactured Assemblies Corporation is considering Vandalia for an expansion project. Shackelford says that MAC has narrowed its choices for the expansion to Vandalia's Stone Quarry Crossings or a satellite location in Buford, Georgia. 
So right now we're competing with that site for potentially getting the, the expansion here in Vandalia. And if they would do it, it would probably be about 14,000 square feet uh, on, on the existing site the way it is now. Um, and as you know, we, we, uh, we did an option for them. Um, I believe I mentioned that before, uh, 3.4 acres that they have to the east that they could potentially expand on as well at some uh, future point in time. Also in Stone Quarry Crossings, the grand opening for the White Castle Food Processing Plant is inching ever closer. They're still in the ramping up uh, stages. They were fine tuning uh, the equipment the last time that, uh, that I was there. I know that at, at some point probably they had pushed out to have um, kind of a big ribbon cutting um, uh, party out there. Shackelford says the new development means new jobs now and potentially new jobs later. There, uh, last I, I heard, they're up to about 50 employees altogether, uh, and um, I think they were targeting maybe be about 60 at the end of this year and, and towards 100 in the next three. And right next door to White Castle is Independent Can, a company that's also very close to turning on the open for business sign. They were targeting um, late January to have the shell up. That's all done and uh, they were working, we were trying to work through some issues with their communications piece uh, and I think a, a, as far as I understand that's going back on, uh, a little bit off target there but back on plan and uh, they were up to about 10, uh, close to 10 employees already and they had only committed to 11 in the first year. Um, but they have a lot of uh, training that they have to do. They have some really nice uh, graphic equipment that they use for uh, they, the processing uh, that they're doing for these still templates. So from what I understand, some of that training takes up to like 18 months. But, uh, but it could be, could be a really big one for us. I know they committed to 30 jobs in three years. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me at some point if they uh, considered an expansion as well. Speaking of expansion, the city of Andelia is expanding its annual Easter egg hunt. Recreation Supervisor Brittany Lewis says this year's hunt will be bigger and better than ever. Yes, it'll be April 19th at 11 a.m. sharp, rain or shine. Um, bring your Easter basket and we'll have tons of eggs for you to find. Lewis says some of the eggs in the hunt will contain candy treats for the kids, while others will contain something a little special. If you get a gold ticket, you will win a prize. Um, you can pick between 20 different Easter baskets. Beyond the baskets, one lucky youngster will get to take the family to see a big name concert production. This year we're also going to have um, Sesame Street and Troy is coming um, and we're partnering with them to hide. We'll have two um, tickets in there for you guys to go to the Sesame Street um, concert. While the event is being put on by Vandalia's Parks and Recreation Department, Lewis says she gets a lot of help pulling the event off. Butler Township donates money for us to put this on. The girls softball team donates um, their time to fill 500 Easter um, eggs. And then First Baptist Church also donates eggs for us to use as well. So we'll have over a thousand eggs this year. Once again, the Easter egg hunt will be Saturday, April 19th at 11 a.m. sharp. You're advised to get there early so you can grab a spot to park and you and your child can find the correct area for your age group, from little ones all the way up to the age of 10. And if your age group is 55 and older, do we have news for you. The Vandalia Recreation Center has just become a participating fitness location for a health insurance company that offers workouts with no out-of-pocket expenses. Healthways Incorporated began working with the rec center effective April the 1st. And they are going to be um, providing us with the Silver Sneakers program as well as Forever Fit program and the Prime program. Facility manager Elaine Kaler says the Healthways program stresses preventative health programs and offer members the opportunity to visit the rec center without dipping into their own pockets for the membership fees. These programs are wonderful opportunities for the participants because um, they can get healthier without any out-of-pocket expenses. Their premium is actually what pays for um, their membership here at the Recreation Center. It's based on utilization, so we turn in reports to Healthways and get reimbursed based on how many times they use the facility. The idea behind the program is simple. People that work out on a regular basis have fewer health problems down the road. Usually people come to us and, you know, they spend their, um, it, or their disposable income 
here that you know it's not the food it's not the um but with this it actually allows them to get that socialization component it allows them to get that fitness component um and get a healthy lifestyle so that they can live longer healthier lives kaylor says once in the door healthways program participants have their run of the facility just like any other member of the center they can walk the track they can go on the fitness floor they can go into the gymnasium or swim laps in the pool all that is um, accessible to them, as well as um, the discounts on the um, member programs, such as um, drop-in fitness classes, swim lessons. They'll get that discount as well as any other member would. To find out if your insurance includes Healthway benefits, you need to pick up the phone. They can uh, contact their insurance cover, um, their insurance uh, carrier, or they can actually call Healthways directly. Uh, they can give them their insurance, give them their policy number, and they can help them out. Starting April 1st, all you have to do is call the Van Dyke Recreation Center and we can check on it for you. Many of the Healthway members will be interested in getting involved with the Rec Center's Senior Strength Program. Our Senior Strength Program is a wonderful program. It's been established here for 11 years now. It's wonderful. We have a lot of people already involved in it. We offer a variety of classes every week, usually from the hours of 8 a.m. to noon. We offer different classes, yoga, strength class, uh, at different times of every day. So anyone age 55 and older can attend. It's wonderful. Um, it's been going strong for 11 years, so we're very proud of it. Recreation Supervisor Sarah Levy says the senior strength participants have a wide variety of programming and benefits to take care of. It enables them to live a healthier, more active life, gets them moving more. And it's also a big social gathering also. They become good friends and it's, it's really become a close community of people here. So. With the Silver Sneakers program ramping up, Levy says there will be some new classes offered at the center, which will be available to anyone 55 or older. The Silver Sneakers Classic is a strength-based class. We're going to use a variety of equipment. We have um, exercise balls to use. We have exercise bands. We have chairs that they can do exercises seated or standing along with um, dumbbells of different um, weights that we can offer for the class. So a variety of things for them to get stronger, more active, and it's a very fun class. We're excited for it. Regardless of your current fitness level, Levy says there's something to be gained from participating in the Senior Strength and Silver Sneakers programs. It's a wonderful way for them to start out. We give modifications, so no matter what level you are, you can take this class, work your way up. Um, the instructors and myself, we work with them, so that way they can still build up their strength. No matter what level they are, anyone can do it, and it's fun, and they will get a great benefit from it. And finally today, if outside exercise is your preference, you should know that Vandalia Sports Complex is entering its second year using a unique lightning prediction system that's designed to give folks an early warning when conditions are right for a lightning strike. The ThorGuard lightning prediction system that we have, it measures the atmosphere and will tell you the likelihood of a lightning strike. A lightning warning system will go off once lightning has been detected in the area. So the purpose of the, the model that we have is to predict in advance to be able to clear our facilities and keep everybody safe. Parks and Recreation Director Steve Clark says that the system gives a very long blast of an air horn and a strobe light is activated whenever the system reads atmospheric conditions that are favorable for the probability of a lightning strike. He says in year one of the new system, the accuracy of the system was remarkable. It's been amazing. It, uh, our staff has monitored it and it has, when it goes off the system, it's usually giving anywhere from 8 to 12 minutes notice that lightning will happen in that area, in this area. And it's been spot on pretty much every time, uh, you know, 8 to 12 minutes later you'll either see lightning or a rumble, rumble of thunder and it's been great. Clark says he's trying to get the word out that sports complex or Helke Park users who hear the blast and see the strobe light need to find cover immediately, even if the conditions don't look menacing to the naked eye. The main thing is, is when that system goes off, uh, you know, there's the, the horn that goes off and then there's the uh, strobe light that will continue to go as long as it's, in a, it's activated. Uh, the, what we need our park patrons to do and our participants in our programs is to take cover. And when we say take cover, we mean either in a building, which would be here at the rec center, 
uh, as well as in their car. The concession stand, the open space areas are not a good location, uh, so we need to work very hard to get people to their cars or to the building. Once the system reads conditions to be non-threatening, it will blow three short air horn blasts and power down the strobe lights, meaning it's all clear to get back to play. And one of the nice parts is, is the, the old style that we did was more of a detection system. When we would see lightning uh, or hear thunder, we would blow a horn and clear the fields, and then it would be an automatic 30-minute wait uh, if no more lightning or thunder was, was taking place. The new system, once it reads the atmosphere that we've cleared that threat, it will give an all clear signal and the strobe light will go off. So we could get back to playing in as little as 10 minutes. The lightning detection system works hand in hand with the city's severe weather sirens, which sound whenever a severe weather event such as a tornado warning are issued for Vandalia. In both cases, folks are advised to take the alert seriously and find safe shelter to wait out the severe weather. The sirens are located in three Vandalia locations, the Sports Complex, Castle Hills Golf Course, and Lichtenfels Park right across the street from Butler High School. Now there's a reason that the tornado warning sirens are all placed outside near large meeting spaces. And that's because these sirens are designed to warn people who are outside of impending severe weather. If you're in your home, you should be relying on television and radio broadcasts to give you the latest information. That's going to do it for this edition of Vandalia, by the way. I'm Rich Hopkins. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.